This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com, and tonight we're going to capture the Seagull Nebula. In between the constellation of Monoceros and Canis Major lies the Seagull Nebula. It looks a lot to me like a phoenix, but it is the Seagull Nebula. And I've always wanted to capture a picture of it. I haven't yet. This will be my first time capturing this target. It's a pretty large target, and I'm not going to be able to get the entire nebulosity of the region in my field of view, but I'm hoping to at least get the main part of what looks like the seagull itself and the small bubble nebula region just below it. In my opinion, the seagull nebula looks most amazing when it's done in the Hubble palette. So I'm going to be taking five minute exposures in uh, hydrogen alpha, oxygen three and sulfur two, and we'll put those together. Hopefully, I can get roughly 18 to 36 images, depending on the two nights. Um, the Seagull Nebula comes up in my area about 8 o'clock at night, and it go I have to stop shooting it because it goes below um, the observatory 20-degree uh, mark towards the south at about 3 o'clock in the morning. So I get about five, six maybe at the, top, at the most uh, hours to image. So I'll divide up that time that'll, in two nights. That'll leave me about 12 hours if there's no clouds that roll in to uh, dedicate to this nebula. So here's how I have this framed up. The Seagull Nebula is going to be a little bit too large, so I'm just going to have to pick the best area that I can. Um, to take my image. The um, coordinates I've got are here and it's six o'clock. I have until about eight so I could take a test image in a couple hours and see how this is going to look. Um, just because the frame box here looks like this doesn't mean that that's the way that my scope um, and my camera are positioned. So I'll have to take a test image and see how that comes through and then we'll, I'll go from there. I might need to either move this or I'll need to go and um, move my camera or the telescope a little bit so that I get something. I'd like to see the head of the seagull um, right here with the wing part going across, but I'll do the best I can and we're just gonna have to see how this goes. So on the sequence, I'm going to turn the other ring on. I'm gonna change the gain to 200, and I'm going to change the time to 300 seconds. And I think what I'm gonna do is start with 24 um, subs, and I'll do hydrogen alpha first just because I'll get a better idea of how it's going to frame up if I've got more data than the first images. And then I'll continue on with uh, sulfur and then oxygen. There's no moon out tonight, so I shouldn't have to worry about when I take my oxygen. If the moon was going to be um, half full or greater and it was going to come out later in the evening, then I would probably do my oxygen first. So this gives me a duration of about 6 hours and 41 minutes, and I think that's going to be a little bit too long, so I'm going to have to right away probably change these to about 20 each, see where that leaves me. I have an estimated time of about 5 hours, so uh, 5 and a half hours, so I'm going to add one more. And that's not too bad, actually, for the short amount of time that it's in the sky. I'm going to change all of these to on. So I'll be um, auto-focusing on each filter change, 
and I'm going to start guiding slew to target, center on target, which is basically a plate solve for the coordinates that I put in. And I also wanted to point out tonight that I'm going to be using the new uh, PHD2 guiding um, dev release that allows you to um, pick multiple star points. And I'm <clears throat> I'm looping at the moment just to see what the what it looks like. But right now I'm at the home position, so I'm going to turn this off. But it'll start guiding later, and it should do the multiples. And then we can check and see how good my um, total RMS error is. It's usually been really well, um, just based on the fact that I'm only shooting at um, about 447 uh, millimeters on my main imaging scope. So I don't have much of a problem guiding at, at that short of a focal length. Um, but anything that could do even better, I'm all for. And I saw a Quiv, the Lazy Geeks video on the PhD2 guiding, and I wanted to uh, give it a shot. As soon as I saw that, I was all over it. So I downloaded it and installed it, and we'll see how it works tonight as well. Here's a single sub. This came in at uh, 1018. It's got some pretty good detail, so I'm pretty happy with it. I've managed to keep the head of the seagull um, within the frame, and this is the only way that I can get as much um, of this target as I can within uh, my field of view for my telescope. Um, also, if you look at the guiding here, um, this is with the multi-star guiding on the new PHD2 um, dev release. And th this is pretty impressive here. Um, th this almost doesn't move at all. I did um, set up a dark library in PHD2. I've never used the dark library before, but I figured if it's going to uh, use multi-star, then I needed to get rid of any kind of hot pixels that might be an issue. So, and it, it didn't take long to make the dark library, so maybe I'll make a video on that um, sometime in the future. The Seagull Nebula rises right about there. And it takes an arc similar to what I'm going to do right now. And then it sets right over those mountains right there. Here's the strange predicament that I found myself in on day two. <clears throat> After imaging um, the first night, I had moved um, this target box to somewhere about here. And when I was happy with it and I um, recentered the image and then I slewed to it and I started my sequence that way. And what I had been doing is just um, leaving the computer on and the next night just um, resetting the sequence and starting over. But the computer uh, ended up rebooting because I forgot to um, turn off the Microsoft security updates and I had actually lost these coordinates up here. So in order to find the exact coordinates that I could put in um, for night two, um, I'll show you what I did. I opened up uh, PixInsight and I just opened up one of the subs from, from the night before and then I went to the FITS header. And inside the FITS header, it gives you um, the RA and the deck, but they're in degrees, and I need them in um, hours, minutes, and seconds uh, for RA, and degrees, minutes, and seconds for the deck. So I found this website, and this allowed me to put the declination in degrees in, and it gave me, it converted um, the degrees, minutes, and seconds for me, which I was then able to put into Nina. And then I found this website, which you could put the RA degrees in, and it spits out the minute seconds as well, hours, minutes, and seconds. 
So once I put that back in, I was able to get a sub that was um, very similar to this one without losing too much of the edges. Um, what I normally do, uh, especially if I'm going to have a multi-night project, is, is that I just uh, jot down um, the... I jot down the RA and the deck from right here, but I guess that night I just didn't think, and that was a, a small little rescue, and I thought I'd share in case that ever happens to anyone. Well, I had an awesome couple nights of imaging the Seagull Nebula. There were was very little wind and almost no clouds at all and almost no moonlight at all. I wish I could have went for 10 minute subs instead of 5 minute subs, but I just didn't have as much time as I would have liked with my object in the sky where I could reach it. So I went with the 5 minute subs so that I'd have more to stack. If you like this type of content, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, it really does help, and we'll see you in the next video.